In this session, we're going to use this simple buried culvert model to look at some of the new ease of use facilities that have been added into 15.1. Now this line represents the soil, so we're looking at a buried culvert on spring supports. If I rotate the model around, you can see it's just a simple 2D line beam problem. Here we've got a number of load cases, so dead load. We've got some earth pressure on the left wall. You can see the loading there and then earth pressure on the right wall and we've got earth pressure on the roof. We've then got some combinations to combine those loads and we've got an envelope here and the envelope looks at the worst effects from the combinations. So a fairly simple buried culvert model. Okay I'm going to load my results up and there you can see the bending moment due to the dead load. What I'm going to do is set active the maximum part of the envelope for thick beam MZ. And now what I'm looking at is the maximum bending moment from the envelope. But new in version 15.1, if I go to the diagram layers, I can also add the minimums or look at extreme envelopes. Now in this case, I'm going to look at max and min together. So what you can see now is in blue the minimums and in red the maximums. So in a single display, I can see both. I don't need to set active the different parts of the envelope here. OK, I'm just going to switch back on my fleshing. Now at the moment I've got flexible corners such that the bending moment goes right into the corner, but in reality that wouldn't be the case. The corners would be fairly rigid and I wouldn't have a bending moment. So in this case, I've got a bending moment of 360. If I go to my thick beam elements and just double click on them. Now in version 15, this button was called end releases. It's now called end conditions because I can do end releases and also rigid zones. Now, in this case, the end releases are what we had before, two-dimensional beam, I could rotationally free in the Z direction. But here, the rigid zone allows me to specify how this corner is going to behave. Now, at the moment, it's set as none. I could set a length. But in this case, I'm going to allow Lusas to work it out. So if I click here, you can see Lusas will insert a rigid zone from the connections of the roof and the wall. Now if I OK that and OK, I need to rerun the analysis. And here you can see the rigid zones as red lines. You can see the bending moment starts at the edge of the wall. Here you can see I've got a reduction in the bending moment from the previous run that I did from 360 to 343. Now, if I go back to the end conditions here, we can also now insert a joint element at the ends of the line. Now, the joint element can go here at the end of the rigid zone, or if I didn't have a rigid zone, it would go here at the beginning of the line. So it's now very easy to set up lines and joints together. I also want to point out that the start and end conditions don't need to be the same. So at one end, I could have a rigid zone. At the other end, I might have none. So again, easy to set up in terms of the analysis.